words of Jesus are recorded in the book of Matthew. And he says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. My knowledge of God was factual, not personal. I participate in religion to please man, not God. I had a God of my own making. My God was one that I made up to suit my needs. He was lenient, and loving, and very accepting. He was easily impressed with my vain works. Illusion met truth, however, when I sat under the sound preaching of God's word. I heard words that pierced my heart, such as, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. And, but we are all as an unclean thing, and our righteousness are as filthy rags. I found myself staring into the mirror of God's word, and my pride was shattered. Looking into this mirror caused me to see what I really was, a hopeless, helpless sinner who was merely trying to paste on leaves for an outward show and be pleasing to man although having no real connection to the living vine. Looking for the approval of man, I was trying to apply this balm of religion to a gaping terminal wound of eternal damnation. Of all people, I thought I was a guaranteed fit for heaven. What horror to find that after a thorough examination of my heart through God's word that I was indeed on the outside looking in. Oh, to be so close to heaven only to miss it. All of my self-efforts to attain the approval of God were an odious offense to him. As I was really saying with my life that his son's death wasn't good enough for me. His payment wasn't enough, and I knew it. Forgiveness of my sins was what I now sought. My faith had to be placed in the death, burial, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. It is finished, cried the Savior as he hung on the cross. He had made that final payment for sin. No more striving to earn my way into a relationship with God. After all, with my sin creating a gulf between me and my God the size of the Grand Canyon, it wouldn't matter if I were a world-class long jump athlete. Any effort that I would make would still land me at the base of the canyon. The greatest of our self-effort, sacrifice, and discipline can never propel one to the heights of a holy God. Since bowing before God and asking His forgiveness and placing my total faith and trust in Jesus Christ, my feet have been set upon a new path. My motives are different. My goals are different. I have a new purpose for living. I see the eternal God of heaven at work in my life. His presence surrounds me and His word, the Bible, guides me each and every day. Hope and assurance are mine. The moment I gave up trying to earn my way to heaven and accepted God's perfect Son as my only hope in this life and in the next life, I began a personal, personal, vibrant, exciting journey. Coming to Christ will change your life. You'll never be the same. As the Bible says, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become